so I take a one week break and four views on my last video. Yeah, not great, so maybe no one's watching this video. Anyway, this book, Troy, by Stephen Fry. I'm a bit late on this one, given that it came out, like, ages ago, but let's start right off with the cover design, and I have to say, this is a very satisfying cover design. I think it fits fairly well with the other books, the Greek myth Stephen Fry books. Um, obviously it's a little different, but I think it is generally different in format. These are, you know, individual stories where this is one big story. You can even see, if you can see, inside the cover there's like a little timeline of like general sort of ancient Greek events. And then on the back cover there's a picture of the Mask of Agamemnon, um, which is pretty cool. And then there's a map of ancient Greece, which is always pretty useful. But yeah, really like the cover design. The next thing I want to talk about is the footnotes. There are a lot of them. Honestly, quite a large proportion of the pages have footnotes at the bottom. Like, look at this one. I don't know if you can see, but it takes up literally nearly the whole page. And footnotes can be a problem because they can take away from the story. I don't know, it's just sometimes unsatisfying when you feel you have to read the footnotes and it kind of takes away from the story. Obviously you can just not read the footnotes, but then you feel like you're missing something. And footnotes are explaining things. And I think there is a balance in this book between explaining things and the story drivenness. Personally, I think all the footnotes just should have been put in the appendices and then it wouldn't take away from the story. So then if you just want to read the story, you can read the story. If you want to look at the more explaining things, you can just go to the appendices. Talking about the appendices, I think they are handled very well. Stephen Fry explains things very well. A few quotes from the appendices that I really like. Uh, he lists a bunch of qualities of the, the, the books. So he says, these qualities and more have caused poets, artists, scholars, and readers over the centuries to regard the Iliad, along with its companion piece, the Odyssey, as the supreme works of narrative art to which all others aspire and by which all others are judged which I think is very interesting. He's basically saying, you know, everything we have today is, is basically Homer's idea. You also have to realise that this is not just the Iliad. This isn't just uh, the, a, like a, a summary of the Iliad or the Iliad's, you know, sort of in depth. It is everything about Troy. It is literally its title, the founding of Troy. It's literally right up to the end uh, where it gets destroyed and, and it's, it's very interesting. But honestly, if one more thing could be added, I would say the aftermath of Troy. I find that really interesting, the aftermath and the effects of the war. And certainly the last line of the book is about how the Greeks have been too cruel when they, uh, you know, sacked Troy. And the last line of the book is, uh, they must pay in full for their profanity, said Artemis. Zeus sighed heavily. I wish all those years ago Prometheus hadn't persuaded me to make mankind, he said. I knew it was a mistake. So basically they're saying the Greeks have to pay for what they've done. And I think that definitely alludes to Stephen Fry's maybe fourth book, maybe? I mean, he could do like the aftermath of Troy, like, uh, you know, the Odyssey and the Aeneid and uh, the Orestia and all the other, you know, works of art and fiction or whatever. But there was definitely a lot of stuff I didn't know in especially the origins. I found that really interesting. And it's definitely a lot more than the, just the story of Troy. There's a lot of about what it says about how there's a you know transition from gods to men, you know, the, the shifting of power. And I think that is a really interesting theme. But I think that's all I've really got to say. This is probably quite a short video, um, but uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And, uh, and you should definitely buy the book. It is, I think Stephen Fry is one of the best uh, if, you, if you're looking for, a, I guess, a myth, mythographer or whatever they're called, uh, who explains it really well and in simple terms, but also in depth, then Stephen Fry is probably the one of the best ones. If you haven't bought Mythos and Heroes as well, they're really good. And you can listen to the audiobooks as well, because he reads them. So that's all I've got. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you later.